Manangkabau people Manangkabau, Urang Minang, Malay, Suku Minang, Jawi script, or Min also known as Minang, are an ethnic group indigenous to the Manangkabau highlands of West Sumatra, Indonesia. Minang people are commonly thought of as being hard-working, strategic and diplomatic. The Manangkabau are the largest matrilineal society in the world, with property, family name and land passing down from mother to daughter, while religious and political affairs are the responsibility of men, although some women also play important roles in these areas. This custom is called Lara Badi Kaniago and is known as Adat Perpatia in Malaysia. Today 4.2 million Minangs live in the homeland of West Sumatra. The Manangkabau are famous for their dedication to knowledge, as well as the widespread diaspora of their men throughout Southeast Asia, the result being that Minangs have been disproportionately successful in gaining positions of economic and political power throughout the region. The co-founder of the Republic of Indonesia, Muhammad Hatta, was a Minang, as were the first president of Singapore, Yusuf bin Ishaq, and the first supreme head of state or Yang di Pertuan Agong of Malaysia, Tuanku Abdul Rahman. The Manangkabau strongly profess to Islam while at the same time also follow their ethnic traditions, or Adat. The Manangkabau Adat was derived from animist and Hindu-Buddhist beliefs before the arrival of Islam, and remnants of animist beliefs still exist even among some practicing Muslims. The present relationship between Islam and Adat is described in the saying, "...traditions are founded upon the Islamic law, and the law founded upon the Quran." Adat Basandi Sayara Sayara, Basandi Kitabula. As one of the world's most populous as well as politically and economically influential matrilineal ethnicities, Manangkabau gender dynamics have been extensively studied by anthropologists. The ADAT Manangkabau, Adaik, traditions have allowed Manangkabau women to hold a relatively advantageous position in their society compared to most patriarchal societies, as most property and other economic assets pass through female lines. The Manangkabau's West Sumatran homelands was the seat of the Pagaryang Kingdom, believed by early Orientalists to have been the cradle of the Malay race, and the location of the Padri War Etymology <inaudible> 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 A popular legend that has it that the name is derived from a territorial dispute between a people and a prince from a neighboring region. To avoid a battle, the local people proposed a fight to the death between two water buffalo to settle the dispute. The prince agreed and produced the largest, meanest, most aggressive buffalo. The villagers on other hand produced a hungry baby calf with its small horns ground to be as sharp as knives. Seeing the adult buffalo across the field, the calf ran forward, hoping for milk. The big buffalo saw no threat in the baby buffalo and paid no attention to it, looking around for a worthy opponent. But when the baby thrust his head under the big bull's belly, looking for an udder, the sharpened horns punctured and killed the bull giving the villagers their victory Manang, hence Manang Kaba, victors of the buffalo which eventually became Manangkabau. The legend however has its rebuttals as the word Minang refers to the consumption of areca nut Penang, yet there hasn t been any popular explanation on the word Minang. That relates the aforementioned action to the word for water buffalo. The first mention of the name Manangkabau as Mananga Tamwin, is in the late 7th century Kedukan Bukit inscription, describing Sri Jayanasa's sacred journey from Mananga Tamwin accompanied with 20. 000 soldiers heading to Matajap and conquering several areas in the southern of Sumatra. History Topic. The Manangkabau language is a member of the Austronesian language family, and is closest to the Malay language, though when the two languages split from a common ancestor and the precise historical relationship between Malay and Manangkabau culture is not known. Until the 20th century the majority of the Sumatran population lived in the highlands. The highlands are well suited for human habitation, with plentiful fresh water, fertile soil, a cool climate, and valuable commodities. It is probable that wet rice cultivation evolved in the Manangkabau highlands long before it appeared in other parts of Sumatra, and predates significant foreign contact. Adityawarman, a follower of Tantric Buddhism with ties to the Singhasari and Majapahit kingdoms of Java, is believed to have founded a kingdom in the Manangkabau highlands at Pagaruying and ruled between 1347 and 1375. 
The establishment of a royal system seems to have involved conflict and violence, eventually leading to a division of villages into one of two systems of tradition, Badi Kaniago and Koto Piliang, the latter having overt allegiances to royalty. By the 16th century, the time of the next report after the reign of Adityawarman, royal power had been split into three recognized reigning kings. They were the king of the world Raja Alam, the king of Adat Raja Adat, and the king of religion Raja Abadat, and collectively they were known as the kings of the three seats Raja Tigo Silo. The Manankabao kings were charismatic or magical figures, but did not have much authority over the conduct of village affairs. It was around the 16th century that Islam started to be adopted by the Manankabao. The first contact between the Manankabao and Western nations occurred with the 1529 voyage of Jean Parmentier to Sumatra. The Dutch East India Company first acquired gold at Parayaman in 1651, but later moved south to Padang to avoid interference from the Assanese occupiers. In 1663 the Dutch agreed to protect and liberate local villages from the Assanese in return for a trading monopoly, and as a result set up trading posts at Pinan and Padang. Until early in the 19th century the Dutch remained content with their coastal trade of gold and produce, and made no attempt to visit the Manankabao Highlands. As a result of conflict in Europe, the British occupied Padang from 1781 to 1784 during the Fourth Anglo-Dutch War, and again from 1795 to 1819 during the Napoleonic Wars. Late in the 18th century the gold supply which provided the economic base for Manankabao royalty began to be exhausted. Around the same time other parts of the Manankabao economy had a period of unparalleled expansion as new opportunities for the export of agricultural commodities arose, particularly with coffee which was in very high demand. A civil war started in 1803 with the Padri fundamentalist Islamic group in conflict with the traditional syncretic groups, elite families and Pagaruying royals. As a result of a treaty with a number of Penghulu and representatives of the Manankabao royal family, Dutch forces made their first attack on a Padri village in April 1821. The first phase of the war ended in 1825 when the Dutch signed an agreement with the Padri leader Tuanku Imam Banjal to halt hostilities, allowing them to redeploy their forces to fight the Java War. When fighting resumed in 1832, the reinforced Dutch troops were able to more effectively attack the Padri. The main centre of resistance was captured in 1837, Tuanku Imam Banjal was captured and exiled soon after, and by the end of the next year the war was effectively over. With the Manankabao territories now under the control of the Dutch, transportation systems were improved and economic exploitation was intensified. New forms of education were introduced, allowing some Manankabao to take advantage of a modern education system. The 20th century marked a rise in cultural and political nationalism, culminating in the demand for Indonesian independence. Later rebellions against the Dutch occupation occurred such as the 1908 anti-tax rebellion and the 1927 communist uprising. During World War II the Manankabao territories were occupied by the Japanese, and when the Japanese surrendered in August 1945 Indonesia proclaimed independence. The Dutch attempts to regain control of the area were ultimately unsuccessful and in 1949 the Manankabao territories became part of Indonesia as the province of central Sumatra. In February 1958, dissatisfaction with the centralist and communist-leaning policies of the Sukarno administration triggered a revolt which was centered in the Manankabao region of Sumatra, with rebels proclaiming the revolutionary government of the Republic of Indonesia in Bukatinggi. The Indonesian military invaded West Sumatra in April 1958 and had recaptured major towns within the next month. A period of guerrilla warfare ensued, but most rebels had surrendered by August 1961. In the years following, West Sumatra was like an occupied territory with Javanese officials occupying most senior civilian, military and police positions. The policies of centralization continued under the Suharto regime. The national government legislated to apply the Javanese Desa village system throughout Indonesia, and in 1983 the traditional Manankabao Nagari village units were split into smaller Joring units, thereby destroying the traditional village social and cultural institutions. In the years following the downfall of the Suharto regime decentralization policies were implemented, giving more autonomy to provinces, thereby allowing West Sumatra to reinstitute the Nagari system. Historiography 
Topic. The traditional historiography or tombo of the Manankabao tells of the development of the Manankabao world and its Adat. These stories are derived from an oral history which was transmitted between generations before the Manankabao had a written language. The first Manankabao are said to have arrived by ship and landed on Mount Merapi when it was no bigger than the size of an egg, which protruded from a surrounding body of water. After the waters receded the Manankabao proliferated and dispersed to the slopes and valleys surrounding the volcano, a region called the Derek. The Derek is composed of three Luhak, Tana Dater, Agam and Limapula Koto. The Tombo claims the ship was sailed by a descendant of Alexander the Great Iskander Zulkarnain. A division in Manankabao Adat into two systems is said to be the result of conflict between two half-brothers Datwak Katumangwangan and Datwak Parpesha Nan Sabatang, who were the leaders who formulated the foundations of Manankabao Adat. The former accepted Adityawarman, a prince from Majapahit, as a king while the latter considered him a minister, and a civil war ensued. The Badi Kaniago, Adat Purpatia system formulated by Datwak Parpesha Nan Sabatang is based upon egalitarian principles with all Panghulu clan chiefs being equal while the Koto Piliang, Adat Katumangwangan system is more autocratic with there being a hierarchy of Panghulu. Each village Nagari in the Derek was an autonomous republic and governed independently of the Manankabao kings using one of the two Adat systems. After the Derek was settled, new outside settlements were created and ruled using the Koto Piliang system by Rajo, who were representatives of the king. Culture Manankabao have large corporate descent groups, but they traditionally reckon descent matrilineally. A young boy, for instance, has his primary responsibility to his mother's and sisters clans. It is considered customary and ideal for married sisters to remain in their parental home, with their husbands having a sort of visiting status. Not everyone lives up to this ideal, however. In the 1990s, anthropologist Evelyn Blackwood studied a relatively conservative village in Sumatra Bharat where only about 22% of the households were matrahouses, consisting of a mother and a married daughter or daughters. Nonetheless, there is a shared ideal among Manankabao in which sisters and unmarried lineage members try to live close to one another or even in the same house. Landholding is one of the crucial functions of the suku female lineage unit. Because Manankabao men, like Assanese men, often migrate to seek experience, wealth, and commercial success, the women's kin group is responsible for maintaining the continuity of the family and the distribution and cultivation of the land. These family groups, however, are typically led by a penghulu headman, elected by groups of lineage leaders. With the agrarian base of the Manankabao economy in decline, the suku, as a landholding unit, has also been declining somewhat in importance, especially in urban areas. Indeed, the position of penghulu is not always filled after the death of the incumbent, particularly if lineage members are not willing to bear the expense of the ceremony required to install a new penghulu. As early as the age of seven, boys traditionally leave their homes and live in a sarau a prayer house and community center to learn religious and cultural adat teachings. At the sarau during nighttime after the Isiak prayers, these youngsters are taught the traditional Manankabao art of self-defense, which is silik, or silat in Malay. When they are teenagers, they are encouraged to leave their hometown to learn from schools or from experiences out of their hometown so that when they are adults they can return home wise and useful for the society and can contribute their thinking and experience to run the family or nagari hometown when they sit as the member of council of uncles this tradition has created minang communities in many indonesian cities and towns which nevertheless are still tied closely to their homeland a state in malaysia named negri sembilan is heavily influenced by minang culture because negri sembilan was originally manangkabau's colony the traditions of sharia in which inheritance laws favor males and indigenous female-oriented Adat are often depicted as conflicting forces in Manankabao society. The male-oriented Sharia appears to offer young men something of a balance against the dominance of law in local villages, which forces a young man to wait passively for a marriage proposal from some young woman's family. By acquiring property and education through Marantau experience, a young man can attempt to influence his own destiny in positive ways. Increasingly, married couples go off on Marantau. In such situations, the woman's role tends to change. 
When married couples reside in urban areas or outside the Manankabau region, women lose some of their social and economic rights and property. One apparent consequence is an increased likelihood of divorce. Manankabau were prominent among the intellectual figures in the Indonesian independence movement. Not only were they strongly Islamic meaning, their religious belief is different from the occupying Protestant Dutch, and like every other Sumatran, they are culturally and naturally proud people, they also have traditional belief of egalitarianism of standing as tall, sitting as low, that no body stand or sit on an increased stage, they speak a language closely related to Indonesian, which was considerably freer of hierarchical connotations than Javanese, partly because of their tradition of Marantau, Manankabau developed a cosmopolitan bourgeoisie that readily adopted and promoted the ideas of an emerging nation-state, due to their culture that stresses the importance of learning. Minang people are over-represented in the educated professions in Indonesia, with many ministers from Minang. Topic. Ceremonies and festivals Topic. Manankabau ceremonies and festivals include Turun Mandi – Baby Blessing Ceremony Sunat Rasul – Circumcision Ceremony Baralek – Wedding Ceremony Batagak Pongulu – Clan Leader Inauguration Ceremony. Other clan leaders, all relatives in the same clan and all villagers in the region are invited. The ceremony lasts for seven days or more. Turun Ka Sawa – Community Work Ceremony Manyabak – Harvesting Ceremony Hari Rayo – Islamic Festivals Adoption Ceremony Adat Ceremony Funeral Ceremony Wild Boar Hunt Ceremony Manta Pabakoan – Sending Food to Mother-in-Law for Ramadan Tabuak – Muslim Celebration in the Coastal Village of Parayaman Tana Ta Sarah, inaugurate a new clan leader Datuk, when the old one died in the few hours no need to proceed to the Badagak Pongulu, but the clan must invite all clan leader in the region. Mambangkik Batang Tarandam, inaugurate a new leader Datuk, when the old one died in the past 10 or 50 years and even more, attendance in the Badagak Pongulu ceremony is mandatory. Topic. Performing arts Topic. Traditional Manankabau music includes Salwang Jo Dengdang which consists of singing to the accompaniment of a Salwang bamboo flute, and Talempong Gong chime music. Dances include the Tari Piring plate dance, Tari Payung umbrella dance, and Tari Indang also known as Endang or Badindan. Demonstrations of the Silat martial art are performed. Pidato Adat are ceremonial orations performed at formal occasions. Randai is a folk theatre tradition which incorporates music, singing, dance, drama and the silat martial art. Randai is usually performed for traditional ceremonies and festivals, and complex stories may span a number of nights. It is performed as a theatre in the round to achieve an equality and unity between audience members and the performers. Randai performances are a synthesis of alternating martial arts dances, songs, and acted scenes. Stories are delivered by the acting and singing and are mostly based upon Manankabau legends and folktales. Randai originated early in the 20th century out of fusion of local martial arts, storytelling and other performance traditions. Men originally played male and female characters in the story but, since the 1960s, women have participated. Topic. Crafts Topic. Particular Manankabau villages specialize in cottage industries producing handicrafts such as woven sugarcane and reed purses, gold and silver jewelry using filigree and granulation techniques, woven sonket textiles, wood carving, embroidery, pottery, and metallurgy. Cuisine <coughs> 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 The staple ingredients of the Manankabau diet are rice, fish, coconut, green leafy vegetables and chili. Meat is mainly limited to special occasions, and beef and chicken are most commonly used. Pork is not halal and not consumed, while lamb, goat and game are rarely consumed for reasons of taste and availability. Spiciness is a characteristic of Manankabau food. The most commonly used herbs and spices are chili, turmeric, ginger and galangal. Vegetables are consumed two or three times a day. 
Fruits are mainly seasonal, although fruits such as banana, papaya and citrus are continually available. Three meals a day are typical with lunch being the most important, except during the fasting month of Ramadan when lunch is not eaten. Meals commonly consist of steamed rice, a hot fried dish and a coconut milk dish, with a little variation from breakfast to dinner. Meals are generally eaten from a plate using the fingers of the right hand. Snacks are more frequently eaten by people in urban areas than in villages. Western food has had little impact upon Manangkabau consumption and preference. Rendang is a dish which is considered to be a characteristic of Manangkabau culture, it is cooked four to five times a year. Other characteristic dishes include Assam Padang, Soto Padang, Sat Padang, Dendang Balado beef with chili sauce. Food has a central role in the Manangkabau ceremonies which honor religious and life cycle rites. Manangkabau food is popular among Indonesians and restaurants are present throughout Indonesia. Nasi Padang restaurants, named after the capital of West Sumatra, are known for placing a variety of Manangkabau dishes on a customer's table with rice and billing only for what is taken. Nasi Kapau is another restaurant variant which specializes in dishes using offal and tamarind to add a sourness to the spicy flavor. Architecture. <laughs> 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 Topic. Rumah Gadang Manangkabau, Big House, or Rumah Baganjang Manangkabau, Spurred Roof House, are the traditional homes of the Manangkabau. The architecture, construction, internal and external decoration, and the functions of the house reflect the culture and values of the Manangkabau. A Rumah Gadang serves as a residence, a hall for family meetings, and for ceremonial activities. The Rumah Gadang is owned by the women of the family who live there. Ownership is passed from mother to daughter. The houses have dramatic curved roof structures with multi tiered, upswept gables. They are also well distinguished by their rooflines, which curve upward from the middle and end in points, in imitation of the upward curving horns of the water buffalo that supposedly eke the people their name, i.e., Victors of the Buffalo. Shuttered windows are built into walls incised with profuse painted floral carvings. The term rumah gadang usually refers to the larger communal homes, however, smaller single residences share many of its architectural elements. <inaudible> Oral traditions and literature Manangkabau culture has a long history of oral traditions. One is the pidato adat ceremonial orations which are performed by clan chiefs Panghulu at formal occasions such as weddings, funerals, adoption ceremonies, and Panghulu inaugurations. These ceremonial orations consist of many forms including pantan, aphorisms papadapaditi, proverbs pamio, religious advice petua, parables tamsha, two-line aphorisms gurandam, and similes ibarat. Manangkabau traditional folktales consist of narratives that present the social and personal consequences of either ignoring or observing the ethical teachings and the norms embedded in the ADAT. The storyteller Tukong Kaba recites the story in poetic or lyrical prose while accompanying himself on a rebab. A theme in Manangkabau folktales is the central role mothers and motherhood has in Manangkabau society, with the folktales Rancic di Labua and Malin Kundong being two examples. Rancic di Labua is about a mother who acts as teacher and advisor to her two growing children. Initially her son is vain and headstrong and only after her perseverance does he become a good son who listens to his mother. Malin Kundong is about the dangers of treating your mother badly. A sailor from a poor family voyages to seek his fortune, becoming rich and marrying. After refusing to recognize his elderly mother on his return home, being ashamed of his humble origins, he is cursed and dies when a storm ensues and turn him along with his ship to stone. The said stone is in Ermanis Beach and is known by locals as Batu Malin Kundong. Other popular folktales also relate to the important role of the woman in Manangkabau society. In the Sindhua Mato epic the woman is the source of wisdom, while in the Sabai Nanalua she is more a doer than a thinker. Sindhua Mato staring eye is about the traditions of Manangkabau royalty. The story involves a mythical Manangkabau queen, Bundo Kandwang, who embodies the behaviors prescribed by Adat. Sindhua Mato, a servant of the queen, uses magic to defeat hostile outside forces and save the kingdom. Sabai Nana Lua the genteel Sabai is about a girl named Sabai who avenges the murder of her father by a powerful and evil ruler from a neighboring village. 
After her father's death, her cowardly elder brother refuses to confront the murderer and so Sabai decides to take matters into her own hands. She seeks out the murderer and shoots him in revenge. Language the Manankabao language is an Austronesian language belonging to the Malayic linguistic subgroup, which in turn belongs to the Malayo Polynesian branch. The Negri Sembilan dialect of Malay used by people in the aforementioned state is closely related to it due to the fact many of the population are descendants of Manankabao immigrants. The language has a number of dialects and sub dialects, but native Manankabao speakers generally have no difficulty understanding the variety of dialects. The differences between dialects are mainly at the phonological level, though some lexical differences also exist. Manankabao dialects are regional, consisting of one or more villages and usually correspond to differences in customs and traditions. Each sub-village has its own sub-dialect consisting of subtle differences which can be detected by native speakers. The Padang dialect has become the lingua franca for people of different language regions. The Manankabao society has a diglossia situation, whereby they use their native language for everyday conversations, while the Malay language is used for most formal occasions, in education, and in writing, even to relatives and friends. The Manankabao language was originally written using the Jawi script, an adapted Arabic alphabet. Romanization of the language dates from the 19th century, and a standardized official orthography of the language was published in 1976. Despite widespread use of Malay in both Malaysia and Indonesia, they do have their own mother tongue. The Manankabao language shares many similar words with Malay, yet it has a distinctive pronunciation and some grammatical differences rendering it unintelligible to Malay speakers. Topic. Customs and religion Topic. Animism had been an important component of Manankabao culture. Even after the penetration of Islam into Manankabao society in the 16th century, animistic beliefs were not extinguished. In this belief system, people were said to have two souls, a real soul and a soul which can disappear called the Samanyat. Samanyat represents the vitality of life and it is said to be possessed by all living creatures including animals and plants. An illness may be explained as the capture of the Samanyat by an evil spirit, and a shaman may be consulted to conjure invisible forces and bring comfort to the family. Sacrificial offerings can be made to placate the spirits, and certain objects such as amulets are used as protection. Until the rise of the Padri movement late in the 18th century, Islamic practices such as prayers, fasting, and attendance at mosques had been weakly observed in the Manankabao highlands. The Padri were inspired by the Wahhabi movement in Mecca, and sought to eliminate societal problems such as tobacco and opium smoking, gambling and general anarchy by ensuring the tenets of the Quran were strictly observed. All Manankabao customs allegedly in conflict with the Quran were to be abolished. Although the Padri were eventually defeated by the Dutch, during this period the relationship between Adat and religion was reformulated. Previously Adat customs were said to be based upon appropriateness and propriety, but this was changed so that Adat was more strongly based upon Islamic precepts, with the Manankabao highlands being the heartland of their culture, and with Islam likely entering the region from coast it is said that, "...custom descended, religion ascended." Adat Manaran, Syarik Mandaki. <laughs> Overseas Manankabao Topic. Over half of the Manankabao people can be considered overseas Manankabaos. They make up the majority of the population of Negri Sembilan in Malaysia and Pekanbaru in Indonesia. They also form a significant minority in the populations of Jakarta, Bandung, Maidan, Batam, Surabaya and Palembang in Indonesia as well as Kuala Lumpur, Malacca, Penang, Singapore and Brunei Darussalam in the rest of the Malay world. Manankabaos have also emigrated as skilled professionals and merchants to the Netherlands, United States, Saudi Arabia and Australia. In the overseas Ranto, they have a reputation for being shrewd merchants. The matrilineal culture and economic conditions in West Sumatra have made the Manankabao people one of the most mobile ethnic group in maritime Southeast Asia. For most of the Manankabao people, wandering is an ideal way to reach maturity and success. As a consequence, they exercised great influence in the politics of many kingdom and states in maritime Southeast Asia. 
Overseas Minangkabau are also great influence developing Malaysian and Singaporean culture, mainly language, culinary, music, and martial art. Topic. Notable Minangkabau Topic. The Minangkabau are known as a society that places top priority in high education and thus they are widespread across Indonesia and foreign countries in a variety of professions and expertise such as politicians, writers, scholars, teachers, journalists, and businesspeople. Based on a relatively small population, Minangkabau is one of the most successful. According to Tempo Magazine 2000 New Year Special Edition, six of the top ten most influential Indonesians of the 20th century were Minang. Three out of the four Indonesian founding fathers are Minangkabau people. Many of Minangkabau people held prominent positions in the Indonesian and Malay nationalist movement. In 1920–1960, the political leadership in Indonesian was replete with Minangkabau people, such as Muhammad Hatta a former Indonesian government prime minister and vice president, Agus Salim a former Indonesian government minister, Tan Malaka international communist leader and founder of Perai and Merba, Sutan Syarir a former Indonesian government prime minister and founder of Socialist Party of Indonesia, Muhammad Natsir a former Indonesian government prime minister and founder of Masayumi, Asad a former Indonesian President, and Abdul Halim, a former Indonesian government prime minister. During the liberal democracy era, Minangkabau politician dominated Indonesian parliament and cabinets. They were diversely affiliated to all of the existing factions, such as Islamist, nationalist, socialist, and communist. Minangkabau writers and journalists have made significant contributions to modern Indonesian literature. These include authors Mara Rosli, Abdul Muiz, Sutan Takdir Alishabana, Idris, Hamka, and Ali Akbar Navis, poets Muhammad Yamin, Cheryl Anwar, and Taufik Ismail, and journalists Jamaluddin Adenegaro, Rosahan Anwar, and Ani Idris. Many prominent Indonesian novels were written by Minangkabau writers and later influenced the development of modern Indonesian language. Moreover, there are also significant number of Minangkabau people in the popular entertainment industry, such as movie directors USMAR Ismail and Nasri Chepi, movie producer Jamaluddin Malik and Mira Lesmana, screenwriter Arizal and Azrul Sani, actor and actress Sokarno M. Noor, Christine Hakim, Camelia Malik, Eva Arnez, Narina Zabir, Titi Rajo Bintang, and Dude Herlin. Kino, as well as singers Fariz Erm, Bunga Sitra Lestari, Nizril Erham, Dors Gamalama, Afkanshia Reza and Sharina Munaf. Nowadays, besides Chinese Indonesian, Minangkabau people have made significant contributions to Indonesia's economic activities. Minangkabau businessmen are also notable in hospitality sector, media industry, healthcare, publisher, automotive, and textile trading. Minangkabau businessmen also prominent in traditional Minangkabau cuisine restaurant chains in many cities of Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, and Australia. Notable successes include Abdul Latif and Basra Zulkoto. Historically, Minangs had also settled outside West Sumatra, migrating as far as the South Philippines by the 14th century. Raja Bagindo was the leader of the forming polity in Sulu, Philippines, which later turned into the Sultanate of Sulu. The Minangkabaus migrated to the Malay Peninsula in the 14th century and began to take control of the local politics. In 1773 Raja Melawar was appointed the first head of state of Negri Sembilan. Minangkabaus have been filled many political positions in Malaysia and Singapore, namely the first president of Singapore, Yusuf Ishaq, the first supreme head of state Yang di Pertuan Agong of the Federation of Malaya, Tuanku Abdul Rahman, and many of Malaysian government minister, such as Aisha Ghani, Amirsham Abdul Aziz, Aziz Ishaq, Ghazali Shafi and Rais Yadam. They are also great contributing on Malaysian and Singaporean socio-cultural, such as Zabir Said, who composed Majula Singapura the national anthem of Singapore, Wantli Yazid, the Singaporean musician, the Malaysian film director, Uwe Haji Sari, the language expert, Zainal Abidin Ahmad, as well as business and economic activities, such as Muhammad Tayb bin Haji Abdul Samad, Mokzani Mahathur and Tunku Tan Sri Abdullah. Notable people of Minangkabau descent outside of Malay world include member of the House of Representatives of the Netherlands, Rustam Effendi, Ahmad Khatib, the Imam head of the Shafi'i School of Law at Masjid al-Haram, and Khatib's grandson Fouad Abdulhamid al-Khatib as Saudi Arabian ambassador. See also 
Topic West Sumatra Negri Sembilan Rumah Gadang Minangkabau Merchants Topic References Topic Topic General Topic Topic Notes Topic Topic Further reading Topic Natsif Basir, Eli Kazim, 1997, Tata Kara Perkawinan Adat Istiadat Manankabau, Eli Kazim Collections, OCLC 16688147 External links On Cultures Loom The Carvers of Bukatingi